Benjen Stark, a man featured in what is probably up to hundreds and hundreds of fan theories by now. This video lets talk about the little we know of Benjen before the books, and then recap his actions in the books. Or rather, book. Benjen Stark was born to Rickard and Liara Stark in 267 AC or later, and was the youngest of four, being born after Brandon, Eddard, and Lyanna. As an adult, he was a tall man with long legs, sharp features, and gaunt with blue-gray eyes that often had a hint of laughter in them, much in contrast to Ned's more somber nature and face. And possibly the most important fact, the first time Benjen was ever truly drunk was before the age of 14. It's likely as a child Benjen was closest to his sister Liana, as his two older brothers were fostered elsewhere. In one of Bran's visions, we see as children, Benjen and Liana dueled each other with broken branches for swords. In one instance, she defeats Benjen by slashing him across the thigh, causing him to lose his balance and fall into a pool. This caused the boy to shout until Liana warned him to be quiet or old Nan might hear them and notify their father. She then knelt to pull her brother out of the pool. It is likely they dueled many times as they grew up together. We don't know much else about Benjen as a child until 281 AC when Benjen attended the tourney at Harrenhal with his brothers, sister, and Robert Baratheon. At this tourney, he met Holland Reed when his sister saved the man from three squires. Then Lyanna invited Reed to the feast that evening, and Benjen was in charge of finding him appropriate clothing to wear. At the feast, Benjen teased his sister for crying when Rhaegar Targaryen played a sad song on his harp. She responded by pouring wine over Benjen's head. Also at this feast, a man of the Night's Watch spoke to tourney guests, asking the men to join the Order. Benjen appeared to be very moved by the Black Brother, and this may have influenced him in joining the Watch later in life. Lastly, during this feast, Holland and Lyanna both spotted the squires that had attacked Holland earlier. She pointed out the three boys to her brothers, who offered to help Holland get revenge. For Benjen's part, he offered to find Holland a horse and some armor that might fit. At the end of the tourney, when Rhaegar Targaryen crowned Lyanna the Queen of Love and Beauty, it's not known how Benjen reacted. The next year, in 282 AC, Lyanna was captured by Rhaegar Targaryen, and Benjen's father and brother Brandon were killed by the Mad King, Ares II, when Brandon tried to make Rhaegar pay for what he did and get his sister back. When Ares II wanted Ned and his friend dead as well, Robert's rebellion broke out. As Ned has said, there must always be a Stark in Winterfell, and during Robert's rebellion, Benjen remained at the castle. How he felt about this is a mystery. Being around 1415, losing your father and one brother, having your sister captured, and your only living brother off to war while you stayed at home may not have been that fantastic of a feeling. By 283 AC, the war was done, and Ned returned to Winterfell to rule. Shortly after returning from war, Benjen joined the Night's Watch. Many have speculated why he did so. At the Wall, he would become the first ranger and the bane of the Free Folk. He has stated while ranging beyond the Wall, he has heard direwolves. Benjen also appeared to believe in the others, and, in the few years leading up to the books, felt that cold winds were rising and something was coming. As a man of the Night's Watch, Benjen had kept his brother Ned up to date on the condition of the Order. Along with whatever information he gets from the Lord Commander, Ned is very aware that the Night's Watch is a shadow of what it once was. At one point, Ned discussed with Benjen about a plan to raise new lords and settle them in the abandoned holdfasts as a shield against the wildlings, but it would require the Watch to yield back a large part of the gift. Despite that, Benjen told Ned he believed the Lord Commander could be won, as long as the new lordlings paid taxes to Castle Black rather than Winterfell. Ned had decided to implement his plan after winter. There's some speculation on whether Benjen was truly happy with his decision to join the Black Brothers. When others want to join freely, he is very upfront about how much the oath costs, and that if a person knew, they'd be less eager to pay the price. This could be a hint of Benjen thinking twice about his hard life he chose, or likely just making sure others know what they're getting into, especially people he cares about. Given that he is a black brother, it's likely Benjen wasn't very close to Ned's children. However, Benjen did visit Winterfell on occasion, and Ned's children have warm memories of interactions with their uncle. Well, mostly. Bran was once upset when he tried to quiz Benjen about the Night Fort and the horrible tales of what happened there, and Benjen only shrugged and responded, We left the Night Fort 200 years ago, not giving him a real answer, or at least the one he wanted. He did share about the treacherous ice steps of the Night Fort with Bran, though. 
From all accounts, Benjen was always nice to John, giving him warm smiles and not treating him as any less for his bastard status. He also appeared concerned with how John is treated, as seen when he gives John a long look and questions why he isn't eating at a table with his brothers at the welcoming feast for Robert Baratheon. As well, he seems a tad upset when John says bastards grow up faster than other children, though he knows it's true and most likely feels a bit sorry for John. Now for book actions for Benjen. When Ned learned that Robert Baratheon was coming to Winterfell in 298 AC, he sent word to Benjen on the wall so that he could come for the feast. At the welcoming feast, Benjen is one of the last High Lords to enter. There, Benjen likely talked to all his nieces and nephews. With his nephew Bran, he talked about the Night's Watch and joked that Bran knew the names of the forts along the wall better than he does, and that Bran should be a First Ranger, while Benjen stayed at Winterfell in his place. Benjen also interacted with his nephew John, inquiring about his direwolf and how drunk John exactly was. He also notes how observant John is and tells him the Watch could use a man like him. When John asks to immediately go to the Wall, Benjen informs him that the Wall is a hard place for a boy. John pointed out Darien Targaryen was only 14 when he conquered Dorne, and Benjen counters that the conquest lasted a summer. The Boy King lost 10,000 men and 50,000 trying to hold it, and that someone should have told him, war isn't a game. When John is still insistent on joining, his uncle tells him he doesn't know what he's asking and to wait a few years, and possibly father a few bastards of his own. Benjen also expresses that it is a pity John is not his son. Sometime after the feast, Benjen would go to the Maester Winterfell, Lewin, and tell him of John's desire to join the Night's Watch. The Maester in turn would tell this to Ned, who agreed to speak to Ben about it later. Benjen would also join the hunting party with Robert Baratheon while he stayed at Winterfell. On the day he was to leave to go back to the Wall, he leaves later than he wanted to due to John. His company on his journey back include a few fresh recruits, John, Tyrion Lannister, and two of Tyrion Lannister's men. And Benjen was not happy with Tyrion traveling with them. Tyrion believes it's because Benjen shares Ned's distaste for Lannisters. On their journey to the Wall, at the Wolf's Wood, they stayed at a forest holdfast and were joined up with another Man of the Watch, Yorin, who also had fresh recruits. Their total became five men, three boys, a direwolf, 20 horses, and a cage of ravens the Maester Winterfell gave to Benjen. At one point, Benjen would offer his riding fur, a tattered bear skin, to Tyrion. Tyrion, suspecting Benjen might be trying to make the journey miserable for him, accepted it, knowing he had done it out of gallantry and had expected Tyrion to decline. Tyrion also suspected that Benjen had regretted that chivalrous impulse on the rest of their journey to the Wall. Finally reaching the wall, Benjen becomes a completely different person to John. John notes he is no longer the friendly and warm person he was. Instead, Benjen spent most of his days and nights with the Lord Commander Mormont, Maester Aemon, and other high officers. Three days into John's arrival at the wall, he hears that his uncle is to lead a half dozen men on a ranging into the haunted forest. This order comes from the Lord Commander, who wants Benjen to search for the missing brother, Waymar Royce, who had been out on his first ranging. John asks to go with him, but Benjen refuses curtly, informing John that the wall is not Winterfell. A man only gets what he earns, John is no ranger, but a green boy, and Stark blood will win him no easy favors. Benjen drives his point home by telling the boy he had put aside his old family when he swore his vow, and even though Ned will always have a place in his heart, the men of the Night's Watch were his brothers now. John approaches Benjen on the day he is to leave, but he still tells him no. Benjen thought he might search as far as the Shadow Tower, but he went missing and didn't return by John's name day like he said he would. Many believe he is dead, though others believe Benjen knows the haunted forest better than anyone, and he'll find his way back. Benjen's family would inquire and think about him after he went missing, well after the first book. Jor eventually sends out rangers in search of him, including Jeremy Riker and Corrin Halfhand. Neither men and their search parties find him, though. In his absence, Jeremy Riker led the rangers. Almost half a year after Benjen goes missing, two men that were part of his party appear outside the wall dead and are brought into Castle Black. It was initially speculated that the wildlings fell on his party and that those two were the last of the survivors. However, after some inspection of the corpses, that conclusion is doubtful. Finally, Lord Mormont plans a great ranging beyond the wall, partly to discover Benjen's fate. By the last book, his whereabouts, or if he is even alive, is unknown. 
but on the Great Ranging, John may have found a cloak and obsidian that Benjen had buried. There is plenty to talk about with Benjen, and we'll continue with that in a future video. Make sure you hit the like button, it helps out the channel a ton. We're still on Stark Month, even though it's soon going to be April, so I always go longer than what I think I'm going to. Thank you for watching.